The start of my career was more in making um, graphic novels, comic book stories, working as an illustrator rather than a fine artist in a gallery. I've always aligned myself more with, with storytellers and novelists. I always had a specific point where I felt like I can't express it further in words and I need an image that's more direct or raw or um, expressive. Now, some of it's observational drawings, but, but mostly it's, it's sort of figures and images that either come from things that I think or hear. Often it's um, things I would draw while I'm sitting listening to music. You know, most, most of the drawings happen like doodles almost, so intuitive um, image making. And then I step back and sort of think, what can I make of them? I always had this feeling that we're trapped at the, mm -hmm. <laughs> the bottom of this continent and we can't get out, and just before internet. So your only glimpses of artworks or a bigger world out there was through books. So I think that's also where my love of books <laughs> <I> came <laughs> from, because yeah. I used to escape my reality through stories and books. We started discussing the possibility of using um, not only illustrated works but maybe shifting our work to bigger pieces and paintings and so on, which is something I've always wanted to do but it was quite a big jump. The characters that do come up in my larger pieces are sort of primordial characters that repeat and not necessarily even in the same face or physical manifestation. In the bigger pieces it was quite nice for me to leave things less clear and more ambivalent and leave it more open to a viewer to, to maybe decide who is this person and what, what is their story. Well, I was still in school when, when Nelson Mandela was freed from prison, mm -hmm. but I started my first year at university with the first elections in '94. so that was quite a big thing for um, young people of my generation, because we sort of had a bit of both. The colours, the type of mark making, I think was definitely influenced uh, by the vernacular of South Africa, the type of handmade graphic street art. It also has to do with, in a sense, having an ironic look at what is considered to be primitive art or African art or certain art forms where it's not necessarily a direct cousin of the comic book anymore. In that sense, it makes it often more difficult to categorize or, or even critique because it's ambivalent and it looks at human gray areas, I think, and embodiment, what it means to be trapped in an embarrassing body and form <laughs> that you can't control. A lot of the works I make are, are sort of born out of a certain frustration with something. Like I would for example, make something like this on a page and then feel like I want it to be more three-dimensional or alive. It's not necessarily, again, a pre-plotted person or, or story. It kind of happens through, through the actual carving. But I think the whole thing of feeling uncomfortable in your own skin and um, feeling ambivalent about who you are in a specific society is definitely evident in the creatures that I, that I make. I do think that it, um, in content and uh, the emotional undertone of it is more universal than just being in a specific geography.